welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing some fun, cute, and cozy Nintendo Switch games. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, then just keep watching. Also remember to like and subscribe, because you liking and subscribing makes me feel validated inside. Okay, let's get into the video. The first game I have for you is Super Mario World and Bowser's Fury, but Bowser's Fury in particular. The goal is to collect these cat shines to make Bowser go away. He's scared of light for some reason, like a vampire or something, and he disappears, but don't worry, he'll be back. Here's Mario as a cat, a recurring theme in this game. My favorite part of this game is this dinosaur thing called Nessie. I like calling him Blubber because he just flops around and destroys everything. I like chafing him on the trees. I spend so much time just destroying everything in plain sight which I don't think is how this game is meant to be played, but I don't care because I love doing this. Do I have problems? Yes, I do. Oh yeah, and when Bowser comes back at nighttime, you don't even need to worry because you can use Blubber as a good old meat shield. He disintegrated, but don't worry, he respawns. Here I am again giving Bowser some good old barbecued meats. Even villains have to eat. I also love how there are cats everywhere in this game. All the cats want to cuddle Mario, even when I'm taking one as hostage. Am I a bad person for being curious about what it's like to throw one over the cliff? He's still alive, don't worry, I miss the water. Okay, I'll stop being cruel now. I would actually give this game a 10 out of 10 because of how much I enjoyed it, even though I spent a lot of time doing stupid things. But that's part of the fun of games letting loose and acting stupid. Another Mario game that I'll talk about is Mario Party. There's also a new one coming in October if you want to wait for that one. Here I am controlling two players by myself to make it look like I have friends. I'm going to play against master CPUs because I'm not a wuss. There's different modes that you can choose from. They're normal mode, only mini games, or team mode, my favorite. I like playing with my boyfriend because then he can carry me and I can just relax. This is essentially a board game, and there are only four different boards that you can choose from. You basically roll dice to move, and then you play mini games to earn coins. You use those coins to buy stars, and whoever has the most stars at the end wins. The dice roll determines how many spaces you can move, and you want to reach the space that has the star. You move once per turn, and at the end of your turn there is a mini game. You want to win that mini game because then you earn coins and you use those coins to buy stars. Money makes the world go round in this game, just like in real life. Let's not watch the mini game because I lose pretty badly, but remember that I am playing both players at once. There's lots of random things that happen in this game, such as when I land on the shortcut that leads me right to the star. Not all of us are born winners, sorry CPUs. I would rate this game an 8 out of 10 because it is fun, but I wish that they had more mini games and boards. The next game that I have for you is Animal Crossing, which I feel like everyone and their mom has been playing during quarantine. This is definitely the definition of a slow paced and cozy game, and it's even too slow paced for some people. There are so many clothes that you could hoard, or you could even design your own clothes. You can even change the facial features of your character, essentially giving her plastic surgery without feeling guilty about it. It's kind of sad that my in-game character has better clothes than I do in real life. Here I am running through my house with my strawberry chocolate covered flooring. Very realistic. I have a butt rug in my bathroom because why not? All of the furniture here was bought in-game by performing various chores to earn money, kind of like in real life. There's small things that make this game cute, such as the excitement my character feels after killing a cockroach. Yes, there is a cockroach in my house because I have not played in a while. This room is filled with Sanrio furniture that came from a promotion that you had to buy outside of the game. I woke up at 6am to buy it because I'm crazy like that. Oh, you thought this video was going to be a review on games? No, it's an opportunity for me to flex everything I've collected because it took me so many freaking hours. Most of the items in this room are from their special Mario update. The cool thing about Animal Crossing is that they keep releasing new updates depending on what season it is. For example, they released Christmas light items during winter time, and they also have summer updates, etc. 
In this game, you're free to add whatever furniture you want to your house and customize it to your liking. That's the endearing part about this game. You can create a whole world that's entirely your own. From restaurants to night markets, you can let your imagination run wild, or you can just copy other people from YouTube. This whole place is a deserted island that you can design to your heart's content, and you can be as OCD as you want to. You can choose up to 10 animals to be your neighbors, and you can even reject them if they're too ugly. They'll also still be your friend even if you choose to neglect them like I do. I would rate this game a 9 out of 10 because it is really cute and relaxing, but it does get kind of boring after a while. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see more of my island, but I'm gonna move on because I've been talking about this game for way too long. Thank god, a fast paced game. Splatoon 2 is a game where you are half squid and half human and you can shoot using various weapons, but you shoot paint. If you have online mode, in my opinion multiplayer is the best part of this game. There's this mode called Turf War, where you win if you've covered most of the stage with your team's paint color. I don't have online mode right now because I'm cheap like that, but I'll show you the gameplay in solo mode. There are lots of different weapons that you can choose from, including this fun one that's a paint roller. You'll eventually run out of paint though, and in order to reload, you need to swim around in your paint color as a squid. I like that this game has the fun aspects of a shooter game, but without the intensity of a really stressful one. I also love squids, they're delicious. There's lots of different bosses for you to take on as well, like this toaster oven. Who knew that bread could be scary? There's even a giant tentacle on top because that's totally normal. You can also zip line through different stages, like this cool looking one that takes place at night. I think it's supposed to be creepy, but I find it comforting. You can swim around and graffiti everything and fight all the random bosses that come your way. You can make friends with this creepy looking helicopter. I still don't understand what he's supposed to be. Overall, I'd rate this game an 8 out of 10. I feel like the most fun part comes with the online service, which costs an additional fee. As much as I love Nintendo, I don't really feel like throwing my money at them. The next game that I have for you is Fire Emblem. Here you can see all of my save files because I am obsessive. This game contains a little bit of everything because you can walk around and explore and form relationships with people, but there's also a tactical fighting aspect. In this game, you are a professor who has the job of teaching her students and helping them level up in combat. I like this role because I like telling people what to do. When you go off into battle, you can select which students you want on your team. You take turns moving each player on your team one by one. Each character has different combat abilities and strengths. I like that this game has thinking, but not too much thinking, and a storyline to keep you intrigued. Here's an extra clip of me having a tea party with one of my students. There's some random cheesy moments in this game that I find hilarious. You can also date one of your students too which is kind of messed up, but I'm also not complaining. I would rate this game a 10 out of 10 because it included a little bit of everything that I was looking for. The last game I have is Stardew Valley, which is actually the very first game I got for the Switch. It only cost $15. Here I am with my in-game husband, who is actually pretty boring and useless. He says the same thing every day and does nothing while I do all the work farming. This is an open-ended game where you are a farmer and you are free to do whatever you want. Some typical tasks include taking care of your crops and selling them for profit, and also taking care of all of your farm animals. I name all of my animals after food or drinks because looking at them makes me feel hungry. You can go around town mining, foraging, building relationships, dating multiple people at once, the possibilities are endless. It's a very relaxing and easygoing game. It makes me feel happy, but also sometimes puts me to sleep. I think it would be even more fun if you tried their multiplayer mode and played with your friends. I'll be honest that I haven't played this game in a while, but I included it because I thought it would be a nice option for those of you that want a relaxing and affordable game. Overall, I would rate this game a 7 out of 10 because I'm not that big of a fan of the art style, but it was a great first game to own on the Switch. So that's it for this video. If you made it this far, comment down below what your favorite game is and if there's a game that you would like me to review. Remember to like and subscribe to help me out because I need it. 
I'll be posting more game content soon. See you in the next one. Bye.